hey what's up just updated to fo studio 20.1 gonna explore some of the new features and um see what's up so basically what i noticed about this update is they're trying to implement a lot of traditional door features into fo studio so in other words fo studio has always been this really really non always had this really non-linear approach to workflow you could basically do anything in any way you want there's a million different ways to do a million different things and i think that's what people love about fo studio so much is that they can really tailor it to their workflow and do things just you know just the way they want to do it but with that being said there are people who maybe are either coming from other doors or kind of want a little more concrete way of of doing things like how ableton everything in ableton from what i understand it's like super set in stone it's like there are not many different ways you can do different things and um so i think some people kind of like that But what FL Studio is really great at is whenever they design these new um, features and these new updates, they do it in such a way where it's like optional. So like all these features that we're about to get into, if you don't want to do them, if you don't want to do it this way, you don't have to. You can just continue doing it um, the way you were and keeping your workflow the same. So they're always pretty good at that. But let's just jump into it. So first thing I want to show you is that if you right click on track, on track one over here, and go to track mode, instrument track, you can, we can now set um, an instrument to this track and it'll essentially be married to that track so we'll open up a citrus and we notice a few things right away um track one has now colored yellow and is named citrus and we have a little one bar pa pattern thing it went right to the mixer label citrus and everything and it also went to the channel rack this was all from just right clicking track track one, going to track mode and just selecting citrus. So let's take a look at the channel rack. You'll notice that the mixer assign whatever track number thing is um grayed out, but you can still move it can move it to any track you want but it's citrus is still going to stay on track one in in the arrangement in the playlist arrangement mode so but if if whatever reason you want to move it to track 14 you could do that and what's great about that is when you have effects so we all know the traditional way of adding effects. You go to mixer, whatever, you add a reverb. We all know that. Okay, but now we could go to the browser and just drag and drop right there. And you'll see Fruity Reverb um, is in the mixer. And if we move it, it stays wherever it goes. The reverb stays and you know we can have as many effects as we want and same thing it'll everything is married it'll just stay together what i would recommend is just for the sake of not being so confused if you're if you have citrus on track one over here i would just keep it on track one in the mixer just for consistency purposes 
that's kind of the whole point. That's just what I would do. Oh, and um, I think this is probably, this is a feature I always wanted in NFL, and I'm really happy they added it. So for automation, let's say you want to automate this volume knob, create automation, right click. It automatically groups, <clears throat> it automatically groups to the the instrument it was assigned to which is really great <clears throat> which is really great before it would you would have it would you know you would just put like you know the automation would just be wherever you wanted it to be which is good if you like that but for the sake of staying organized now it's all together and you can add as many automations as you want and it's all neatly grouped together it's organized um and um yeah i think that's a great feature i i always wanted to see fl studio do that um so that's cool okay so also Let's click another track. We now have some features with audio tracks. So I could assign, I could right click, go back to track mode where we, where we found the instrument track and right above it, it says audio track. So we'll, we can basically assign this to be an audio track. So we'll just say insert eight is an audio, Let's just color it to okay. And we'll name this audio. So now this is a this designated audio track. So if you wanted to record a vocal take or guitar or whatever, um you just hit your insert that you're using and you can record subscribe to PewDiePie so you'll see that um, it went it went right into uh, the designated audio track and we could record again we have to un um we have to mute this and subscribe to PewDiePie so now so this is another just another way of keeping things married together and organized so if you have a vocal take and you know, you, it might have, you know, you might have 40 or 50 takes of that, you know, one verse or whatever. Um, and now you can keep it all in, in one designated area. And the purpose for this other than organization is you can compile everything into one take subscribe to P so if i want the subscribe to the subscribe to of the first take but i want the to pewdiepie in the second take subscribe subscribe to i can PewDiePie. do that and now i have a new take So you can also drag and drop audio files onto tracks now. Um, so let me show you what I mean. So we'll pull this onto track one and we'll get three options. Audio clips, audio tracks, and instrument tracks. Now audio clips, as far as I know, all that, all that really does is rename the track to the audio file name and ch change the color. 
um that's about it unless i'm missing something let me know in the comments but the interesting things here are instrument tracks and audio tracks now instrument tracks is basically what we just did with citrus only instead of working with a vst or an instrument we're working with um an audio file so let me show you what i mean we click instrument track and it names it it we, we get an i for instrument and we don't we don't have any we don't see the waveform because we're still working in midi so since we have nothing since we have no midi assigned we have nothing playing we assign midi we get the loop so and um just like with the citrus this is grayed out the assigned mixer track and we can move it anywhere we want and the effects will follow and everything is cool so yeah it's exactly what the what we did earlier in citrus except we're working with an audio file in midi so that's that okay so moving on we'll click audio tracks now okay so now you know things are a little different it went to the audio section of the channel rack and we have um we got a little a for audio and what i don't like about this though is i wish that since see how i put it in track five i wish it went to track five automatically in the mixer but it seems to just be going to the next available uh track in the mixer instead of coinciding with what wherever i put it in the whatever track i put it in the arrangement so i mean yeah that's that's whatever um and this we can't this doesn't move along with um this doesn't move like an instrument track it stays here it stays in channel two track two and but there are some cool things we can do with this like with automation we can create automation so just maybe just a volume thing so let's say i want this loop to fade in so cool so so let's say you you set that automation you know you want to fade in with that loop but let's say you want to change the loop um, but still keep the vo uh, the volume automation well you can just you can just delete that and just put a different track in it could be any any um audio file and we still get the automation so the automation is designated to the track instead of the specific audio file or instrument um so that that's kind of cool and and we can also just throw in tracks the same way that we always could you know just with um just by dragging and dropping it right into the playlist but if i throw it into the assigned audio track you'll notice in the channel rack it goes right to channel two so anything that's in this audio track will be assigned to track two but for some reason when i take it out it doesn't automatically come out of track two we have to to mat if manually um do that if if we wanted to do that but um yeah as soon as you throw it into this track it'll go right to track two so that's cool okay so the other big change in this update is the channel rack 
so you'll notice a few things right away that we have a little X um, little X out button that's cool you notice the slider I mean the um, the swing is no longer a slider it's the knob now uh, so yeah that's whatever um, you still got the piano roll option and all the MIDI options, velocity, panning, stuff like that. Um, and this is new. So we can set the the channel rack to way more, it could go way bigger than it ever did before. So 8 bars is 128 steps. Now I'm using a 27 inch screen right now. And I don't even think this whole thing will fit. And it. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so. Um, yeah, it's so big. Eight bars won't even fit in on my screen. So that's that's pretty crazy. Um. But you'll see if we throw this in the arrangement, you see that we get full eight bars. And we can go up to 32 bars and stretch this out to crazy lengths. So, I mean, that's cool. It's probably especially cool if you have like a 48 inch monitor or whatever. Um, you can uh, to be able to see all that in one screen would I, I would imagine to be pretty helpful. But um, so yeah, let's just put this to four bars, and um, okay, so. And now we have, and we have this loop function that may be familiar to some old school FL users. Um, oh, we also have a bunch of new kicks. That's cool. So let's just make a little beat. Actually, let's change this to two bars. Okay, so we got this little loop going, and we'll open up. A Go back to Citrus. Just set. Um, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So we'll turn loop on and we'll go to piano roll. So um, Citrus is just going to loop for one bar while the rest plays out. So th this could be useful if you're really like, you know, want to work on one specific part, but you just want the rest of the song to play the, the beat to play out and you just really focusing on one part. I guess that would be useful. There's also some other options. right click advanced looping so we can move this I think we had to click steps yeah so we can make this longer if we had more so if like the beat was 
four bars and we wanted to work on a, a two bar section of citrus we could do that we just got to change the steps to citrus to um, 32 steps which is equal to two bars i hope that makes sense yeah um probably not a feature that i'm gonna use too often i think that's why they they got rid of it in fl studio 12 but i guess it's kind of like a legacy thing i i don't know i find it to be a bit confusing and cluttered but yeah but i guess some people will find use in it and that's totally fine we can also open up something else so we can select multiple uh, instruments and we can set the swing for them right through here and you'll see if we click You'll see the swing is 50% because we set it to 50%. And we also have this on button here now. We could solo and turn off instruments directly from the plugin. So let's So yeah, that's a nice little feature to have. View in solo right from the plugin itself. I'm sure I'm missing a bunch of things, but I think these were the main, uh, the main updates to FL Studio 20.1. So yeah, um, thanks for watching.